Ford is with us from the CWTAR, the Central West Tennessee Association of Realtors. I always like to say it that way because I know uh, most of the time I get it right and and uh, and uh, uh, Cleve can't do that. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he struggled through it a few times, and uh, but he got better at it. He got better at it, but, but he hasn't been on saying it in a while. But on the other hand, I've written so many checks to CWTAR. <laughs> we're we're over, not going to talk about that. Over my appraisal that. career that it just comes second nature to me. You know? <laughs> So what's going on in your world today? You are you and I are are, are the show today. And we are the show bad today. About that at all? There's not. We're going to. Uh, we're we're going to. And I know Jimmy's an appraiser, and everybody knows that. But uh, I, I want to get a more of a residential appraiser on here. So Definitely. we're we're working on it. And I've got one that's agreed to come on. He just couldn't be here today because he got back from vacation and he had some three or four appointments lined up for this morning, and one of which he could not get out of. So so we'll yeah, get him know, on here eventually. You know the appraisers. You know some for some reason the the lenders and the real think uh, think that they should have things on time appraisal yeah on time. it's funny how that is right of course on time to them is three days before they ordered it but that's a- <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I'm, that's usually when I'm, they needed I'm it kidding, <laughs> i'm kidding i'm still working so call me <laughs> That's in hilarious. Fact, in fact, I have another one to finish today. I'm on a deadline for tomorrow for two commercial appraisals. There you go. One of them is in the can. The other one will be by, by closing time By tonight. closing time tonight. Yeah, which yeah. Is my, my house probably around 9 o'clock or something. I'll have to say that our appraisers in our area, and I say this out to all of them, and, and I know a big chunk of them, but I say a lot of our appraisers really, they do a good job. They do. And yeah. uh, they and get the information back quickly. And uh, I know we ran into a problem. I have really haven't heard agents talk about it in a while of out-of-town appraisers. Uh, that would come in and try to do property when they don't even live in our, you know, kind of our geographical area. Some right. appraisers we have come from across the river to come over to do appraisals, yeah. and uh, that's difficult because they don't know the area, which we find funny as a realtor because according to Tennessee state law, when it comes to real estate, if if you want me to do something for you yeah. as your representative in an area I'm not familiar with, I mean, I have to tell you I don't know this area. Exactly. I have to get you to sign off on something telling you I don't know this area. Right. So that I, when if I accidentally do a bad <laughs> job because I don't know the area, yeah. at least I can say, well, I told you I didn't know yeah, the area. Yeah, I told you when, when you told me. But yeah, I, I've never understood that either, either, because there, there are plenty of good appraisers, and, I, and I'm not blowing my own horn. I'm sure. talking about the other guys that. at this point. But there are plenty of good appraisers in Jackson and West Tennessee. West Tennessee, Who yeah. are familiar with the market conditions around here. They have the database to deal from. Right. I, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times people have come in from out of this area, from Middle Tennessee or from Mississippi or Arkansas, to do appraisals, and they wind up calling the local appraisers to get the data. That's they call the local appraisers, or they'll start calling real estate agents that yep. will work with them. Yep. You know, and saying, "Hey, I need you to pull this or that," because they're not a member; they don't have access to the multiple listing service data. Yep. And and to me, that just that blows my mind. And of course, the way that it works now, which is different from the way that it used to be, oh yeah, because of the changes that were made. And you know, when the mar- when the when the economy tanked uh back in seven and eight uh you know now then as far as realtors go and lenders go they don't really get a choice on the appraiser that no. they get now these days no it's all it's all done from a quote unquote third party situation <laughs> you know some 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 of the larger banks have departments that do nothing but order and process appraisers appraisals right. others you know they'll do it in-house and and but it's not directly connected with the lending function right which is totally Backwards from the way it used to be. You know, used used to, when I when I first started doing, it, I started this in 1983 as a full time appraiser. Okay, as a lender uh, in savings loan back in before that. But back then, you 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 went out and you cultivated your 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 list, your mm-hmm. your people that you work for. Correct. You knew the lenders. You knew all the lenders and all the banks. Mm-hmm. And and if you were lucky enough and you were good enough at what you did, those guys would call you. And there was never about I need a bid on this. Or there was never, I, I've got to get three other guys to, to bid on this. That that just didn't happen. They trusted you because you knew them. That's right. And they knew you, and they knew the, the kind of work that you did. Yep. And then when they needed something done, they call you, and they said, go out and do it. I need it by this date, if you possibly can. Never, never ask us about fees. Never ask us about this, that, and the other like we like we do now, where you yeah. gotta, you got to fill out a three-page report <laughs> to say yes. You know, and and it's totally changed now, which is taking some of the, the fun out of the the business, if if you will. But uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it works. But we we deal with people on a daily basis by by email, by text, by sometimes by phone, but mostly email and text. Now, people we don't know, we'll never know, we'll never see. And if I have a question, I got to go back through this guy who has to go 
to the to the loan processor who has to go to the originator. You know, and it, it, it is because ridiculous. Because you're not allowed yeah. to talk to s- yeah. these people. Yeah. You know, because there was a big question when, when all this stuff got changed. There was a big question about whether or not the realtor could talk to the appraiser yeah. that was going out to do the appraisal on a property that they had written a contract on. Right. And, and of course, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that it's come the realtor can talk to the appraiser as far as, like, giving them a copy of the contract or whatever yeah, it is yeah. they need. But other than that, that's really about it. Yeah. They can't really get involved with the process. And, of course, they can argue with the appraiser if they don't <laughs> like the way that it looks. But True. the way it is now, once the appraisal has been turned in and submitted, it's difficult to get any changes made to it. Yeah, unless it's just something flagrantly you know, wrong. wrong <laughs> Correct. With, you know, yeah, or the value is way out of line, yeah. which can happen when you have people come in from outside the That's area, right. And know? that's where we. That's typically where we run into a problem is yeah. when we have the out-of-town appraisers. Not that they're not good appraisers. They just don't know our market area and especially if you're coming from like let's say nashville where the market is like off the hook oh yes and then you're coming over here to west tennessee and you're trying to appraise like you would in nashville i mean there's two totally different market areas properties sell differently price is different price per square foot is different you know eligibility i mean every there's so many different things everything's on the market is totally different oh yeah Yeah. totally different i mean they'll pay more for a lot up there now than the house and lot would have brought here 10 years ago oh yeah Nashville, oh yeah you know it's great totally. crazy up there i had i got to, i got into a, a an alter not an altercation but an argument Uh-oh. with a with a with a uh with a an underwriter for okay for a, uh, when i was back doing back in the days when we did houses i had done one out on the east part of town out in the country now okay. we, we are 10 miles out in the country right I used to live to out that way a perspective you know, that's where all my folks are from out beach bluff okay in, yep. in that area cotton grove so, road for yeah, me yeah, so i'm right yeah, around the yeah, corner beach bluff ranger road is where our, yeah. our folks uh-huh. are but I sent this appraisal in, and, and this and this lady called me from from the uh, from the underwriter in Chicago. I said, "Oh boy, here we go." <laughs> so everything was cool except for one thing. She said, "I need you to change one item on your appraisal." I said, "Well, what do you what what's the problem?" She said, "Well, under under driveway, you have dirt as your as the driveway surface." I said, "That's right." I said it was dirt when I was out there, and I'm pretty sure it still is today. <laughs> and she said, "Well, that's that just that won't work. We can't we can't do that. Uh, we uh, driveway has to be a hard surface." I said, "Ma'am, where are you located?" She said, "Chicago, Illinois." I said, "Have you ever been to West Tennessee in July and August?" And she said, "Well, no, I haven't." I said, "Look, red clay dirt." In West Tennessee, in July and August, it don't get any harder that's than right. that. Well, she wanted me to change it, and I refused to do it. I mean, that's that's my prerogative. I said, that's my report. Sure. I said, if you want to change it, you change it, but I will not, I will not verify that 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 was my my opinion. I said, right. I said, you pay me to go out there and tell you what this house, what the house is worth, based on what I observe when I'm there. That is what I observed. It is typical for that area. Bye. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I don't know what they ever did with it, but, uh, you know, I mean, you, that's what you get when you deal with people from not in this you area because do. they don't know. They don't know. You know, on, on Ranger Road, a dirt dirt driveway with a culvert is, is not is uncommon. A, it's a luxury. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, no, just kidding, folks. I'm, <laughs> I'm a beach bluffer too. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I've had my bouts with them as well too. When you're dealing with underwriters from other places, based yep. on an appraisal that was done, and they don't like the way it is, and then yep. your underwriters start calling for repairs, which that one just really blows my mind. I'm just like an underwriter's an underwriter. We tell everybody from a realtor standpoint, we're not uh, we're not electricians, we're not heating and yep. air guys, we're not plumbers, we're not home inspectors, we're not contractors. You know, so we tell them all of that up front. Right. We might make a suggestion, but we can't say you have to do this, right? Right. So then you get an underwriter that's called, and they're like, no, no, you've got to get this stuff repaired under the house. And I'm like, okay, well, we've had a, you know, a builder go under the house, licensed contractor, mm-hmm. and he's written you a letter stating this is okay. And they're like, yeah, we don't care if it still needs to be done. Yep. And, of course, getting way off track on underwriters, <laughs> but that's why it's really important to use a, a, a real mortgage and a realtor, yeah. but a mortgage company that has local underwriters. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of, I'm not mistaken but i think one of our sponsors has uh, local underwriters in-house if i'm not mistaken yes they do and they can put you in touch with any type of mortgage that suits your needs now back in the day you had fha and va and you had conventional and that was pretty much all there was occasionally tennessee housing would get involved with some programs that were that were a little bit mm-hmm. different but it is a maze of things when you start looking for a mortgage nowadays and leaders mortgage services on stonebridge uh, drive or the folks that you need to talk to, they they can they, they can take a five minute conversation with you, find out a little bit about you, whether you're a veteran, uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, whether you still have your VA benefits available, what type of house you're buying, where it's located, and they can put you in the in the mortgage program that is tailor made pretty much for you as far as interest rates, terms, down payments repayment schedules That's whether right. you can pay it off early or not there's a lot of things involved they know all that stuff they do that's why they are probably one of the one of the number one lenders in the city you can't go too many places and not see leaders mortgage services no no, no. they are, uh, they are everywhere. emblem their logo whatever popped up somewhere so now from a realtor standpoint it, it's uh correct me if i'm wrong but it's it's a good thing if if a buyer goes there first Yes. And gets pre-qualified. Pre-qualified. That is so important. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of tells you, because nothing is more more damaging to a buyer's psyche than going out and looking, let's say, at a $250,000 house because they have figured up in their head that this is how much house we can afford based right. on how much we've been paying on rent and how much our car payments are and this, that, and the other. And go out and look at $250,000 houses only to go get pre-qualified and find out that they technically only qualify for, let's say, $150,000 yep. because their debt-to-income ratio may be all out of whack. And, uh, and boy, does that that's so disheartening to potential buyers because now then they can't get all the things that they were looking for or the size of house they were looking for and it's hard to go from here down to here yep. whereas if you go get pre-qualified first before you contact your agent and find out how much house you can afford and then go out and with your realtor to find houses that makes it a whole lot better because now then at least you know you're looking in the price range that True. you can buy in absolutely yeah. and, and you tell you tell your realtor that on the front end it cuts down on a lot of the the footwork for them that's right. Because they can narrow it down to the houses that are in that area that you're looking at, possibly in that price range, and then you know exactly where you are. That's right. If you don't find anything there, then you start to back down. You back down a little, bit. a little bit. That's right. Kind of like finding comparable sales. If you don't find one in the neighborhood, you spread out you a little spread bit. spread out a little bit. Yeah. Yes, I used to do a lot of foreclosure work, and uh, back when we got started, it was a little easier back then. <laughs> and now then you got to jump through all kinds of hurdles to do oh, yeah. foreclosure work, and it costs you a lot of money. The people that do foreclosures have spent a lot of their own money just trying to get to the point where they could do that but that's true back when i started it was pretty easy to get into foreclosures and of course nobody really wanted to do them much because there is a lot of work involved with a foreclosure for no more than they typically sell for but yes the comps uh once a month you had to do that once a month yep. any new sales anything a lot of times you couldn't find them you had to spread that little circle out and get further and further and then they question what you send back to them oh and, yeah uh, it's just a big old, big old pain. But yep. uh, well, Jimmy, I don't know if you knew, but I, I think I mentioned on the radio last time is I took off to Washington D.C. Tuesday, yes, the yes, day yes, after, yes, and got they, back Saturday. Yeah, and you're and you're still alive, still got still all, alive, still got still everything going. you went in with, still everything I went in with. That's I good. Not, I did not think I was going to make it back on Saturday. I will say that was the absolute worst cab ride I have ever had in my <laughs> whole entire life. And I've ridden in many cabs in Washington D.C. because I go every year. Right. And uh, and I convinced the person that was traveling with me to take a cab other than an uber or a lyft because we needed to get to the airport and cab drivers typically know all the fastest routes to get there well boy did we pick a winner on this one <laughs> let me tell you what we had three huge bags uh long story short we had three huge bags and so therefore it was going to be hard for two of us to fit into a little small car with three bags there just wasn't enough room so right. the guy called us over a minivan and we got us a minivan and we had a um not American driver, we'll just say that, right? Yes, yes. But this person had lived in the United States for 50 years and had driven a cab in Washington, D.C. for 35 years. So I thought, hey, we got this made in the shade. Yep. He's going to get us to the airport. Now, keep in mind, we fly in Southwest, so that's Reagan National, which is on the other side of the river, right? Yep. yep. And, uh, and typically, even during mid-morning traffic, because we're leaving in the morning, it should have been about a 29-minute, 35-minute drive to get to the airport, right? So after... Our driver takes off and starts heading down the street, talking 90 to nothing the whole entire time as we're going. <laughs> and he sees traffic start to back up, and he proceeds to tell us that he doesn't like driving in traffic. It makes him nervous. So now that I'm starting to get uh -huh. nervous because he's a taxi driver. I don't believe I they said They always that. drive in traffic, right? <laughs> so he says, we'll bypass traffic, and we'll go down to such and such street, and we'll cross over there. So he takes off. So here we go, weaving through the roads, through the city. Road's closed. Guess what? There's a bicycle race, 26 miles of it, going through Washington, D.C., as we're trying to get out of town. Man. And uh, every road that he tries to get to is closed off for the bike race, and we're getting further <laughs> and further and further away oh, from the airport, still on this side of the river. 
him fussing the entire time about the fact that they got it all closed off for yeah. a bike race and what a ridiculous I that is. that conversation got rather colorful, didn't it? Oh, it gets better. <laughs> so he will not pull out his phone. He will not look at his little thing down here on his uh, that's got the map on it and the route he's supposed to be taking. Didn't call into his office to get instructions or where he could go that might would bypass the route. Still driving, still fussing, getting further and further away, only to get right smack dab in the middle of Georgetown University's commencement. <laughs> that was going on at the Washington <laughs> Monument, oh, which boy. meant traffic was at a standstill like everywhere we went. Oh, and yeah. if you've never been to Washington, D.C., you can't go one block without running into a red light. They're everywhere. Yep. Even the, they have a roundabout that's probably four times larger than ours. Yep. And they messed it up because they have stoplights at every road that comes into the roundabout. Seriously. So you can't even hit the roundabout and keep going. You have to stop and then go on to the roundabout so if you've ever heard of dupont circle that is a roundabout in washington dc that used to function like a roundabout because there's like eight roads that come into that and they put a stoplight at every single one of those roads apparently a uh, government committee got involved (laughs) in washington dc yeah Yeah, probably so So we're getting further away now we're in georgetown traffic people walking everywhere i mean just we've been in the car for 45 minutes and all we've gotten is further away from the airport and have not crossed the river yet so at some point in time he he says, look, it's not, it's not my fault. It's not y'all's fault, so I'm going to turn the meter off. So he turns the meter off, right? Yep. Which he should have turned the meter off, sure, right? Because sure. he's Absolutely. getting he, – if he had stayed where he was, because we had another two people that were traveling with us that left in a cab right before we did, and I texted them, and they said, oh, yeah, we already made it through security, and we're in the airport. If he had stayed on the road that he was on and yep. didn't freak out when he saw the traffic, we would have been there. So we end up going all the way back and crossing over the bridge after going through. Oh, it took us forever. It was about an hour and 10 minutes maybe that it took us to get from our hotel right. to the airport. And he never turned the meter back on, so our ticket was $18.25. So we gave him $20. That's he liked bad. to have had a come apart in the parking lot of the <laughs> airport. <laughs> He's like, it's a forty dollar ride, and I was like, if we got here on time, it would have been. been. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, you're the one to shut the meter off. What no? Yeah, right? That's what yeah. I told him. I yeah. said, you turn the meter off. Is it eighteen dollars and twenty five cents? So there you go. There you go. Catch you later. <laughs> he was still uh-uh. standing in the parking lot fussing as we were walking off, and maybe <laughs> whether that was right or wrong, the point is, we literally walked in, got through security, had time to run to the restroom, got in line, and got on the airplane. And we stood in line about five minutes. Whoa. So if we had been another 10 minutes later, we probably would have missed that flight, only to find out the second flight that we could have got on got delayed until 6 o'clock. So it had a two-hour oh, delay. So I would have been like, I probably would have just passed out in the airport. I would hate to be happened. the poor soul who got that guy going back. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, interestingly enough, apparently one of his regulars kept calling him the whole time he was around with us, wanting him, wanting him to come pick her up and take her to go shopping somewhere so this was one of his regulars and uh so i guess that's who he ended up with who knows let's just say that was probably the worst experience i've ever had normally i love this trip to washington but uh but anyways what i was gonna say was is uh there was eleven thousand realtors there wow for this convention and uh first time ever the president of the united states actually came and spoke Cool. At the how, Realtors how, Convention. How, did, how was that? That was quite entertaining, I will have to admit. I and bet. like I said, I tell everybody all the time, whether you like him or you don't, doesn't really matter. Yeah, he don't he, care either. He doesn't care either, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're just wasting your breath. But he was hilarious. He had us laughing the whole entire time. Of course, you know, that's what he's been doing his whole entire life is real estate business. Sure. You know, and uh, so he even said when he came in, he goes, I've got great speech writers and people write speeches for me all the time. He goes, nobody wrote me anything for today because I don't need it. He goes, <laughs> this is what I've done my whole entire yep. life. So, you know, he had some bullet points up on his prompter, but uh, but pretty much he just winged it. And it, it was just hilarious. I mean, he had us laughing about so much stuff. I did not actually go over to the hotel. He was across the street. And I did not go over to go in and see him in person because they sent out this email and this long list of stuff that you had to adhere to to get in to see the president naturally. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. And one of them was is the line started at 9 o'clock in the morning. He didn't speak till 2. And once you got in line, you couldn't get out of line to go to the bathroom or anything. If you did, you had to get back in the back of the mm. line because nobody could save you a place. Once they got to an auditorium, you couldn't leave the auditorium, the bathroom, nothing. If you did, you had to get back in the line again to come back in. Man. And um, you had to sit where they told you to sit. And, you know, and it's just one of those things. And I was like, there's no way in the world I can stay without a restroom somewhere close by <laughs> for more than like two hours tops, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, well, I'm out. So I'm not even going over. So I watched him on a rollover room in my hotel on a big old giant screen. And uh, he was just he was just funny. I mean, he really was. He talked about a lot of stuff, and he talked about stuff going on. But he got talking about 
and I talked to John sitting out here in the audience about if he knew anything about it, about this train that's supposed to go from Los Angeles to uh, San Francisco. And it's not a bullet train. Yeah. He, he made a point of saying that like many times. It's just a fast train uh, that apparently the government has been paying for for years to get this thing built. But it has to be a straight line. Well, uh, they started in like four or five different sections to build this railway, and they're getting close to being done, even though they're like five or seven years over, yep. and they've paid three times as much as it's supposed to cost, only to realize that the tracks don't match up. <laughs> <laughs> And so naturally they're coming back, want more money, and they feel like they can fix it and they can pull this up and they're going to end up having to pull up more than half of it, apparently, oh, to get it man. fixed. And, you know, and he's just like, no, no more. You know, yeah. you're, you're done. Yeah. And he said, if I'm not mistaken, you can get on a Southwest flight and fly from San Francisco to Los Angeles way cheaper yeah. <laughs> than it'll probably. He goes, now yeah. then they're talking about just pulling up both ends of it and letting it run between two little no-name cities. And take a cab in between. Yeah, take a cab in oh, between man. to get from here to there. So, anyways, <laughs> just hearing him talk about that, it, it was, it, and that was just part of it. It was just funny, just the fact <laughs> that he showed up. You know, that kind of tells you right there because that's the one thing I talk about on the show all the time. As far as realtors are concerned, is not only do we help you list and sell and try to help you find homes, but you know, we're out there all the time protecting homeowners' property rights. Oh yeah. And the National Association of Realtors has a voice of about 1.3 million realtors across the United States. And we have one of the largest voices in Washington. And, you know, and they listen to us when we come in and talk about things that are damaging to a homeowner and their properties when they're trying to take rights away from an individual homeowner. I mean, there's not very few things we have left in this world that we can say belongs to us. But our house and the land we have it sitting on is one of those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it needs to stay. That and way. it needs to stay that way. And that's what we do. So, you know, I tell people all the time that these online sites that a lot of people use to find properties, which is fine, but understand they are not realtors. They are not a part of NAR and they could care less about your property rights because that's not what they're out there for. They're out there to make money. That's what they do. That's what they do. You know, so just keep in mind that realtors are always there to help protect your property rights. And even if you don't own a house now, it doesn't matter. At some point in time, that's the American dream to own your own house and have your own, your own house and your own property. So we're fighting for you as well too, you know, and uh, so so that's really kind of the point I wanted to hammer home with that and talk about Washington. But, uh, but yeah, it, it was fun other than that little thing. Other than the ending, yeah. The ending, yeah. That, that was the one thing kind of didn't go off too well on that. Oh, and the fact that I've stayed in the same hotel. I stayed in the Omni Shoreham. And I'll tell you the last thing it's probably most famous for. It was the Bill Clinton uh, inaugural um, when he won. Yeah. And he played saxophone on the stage. Yeah, that took place in the Omni Shoreham Hotel. Cool. That was the last big thing that happened at this hotel. And it's an older hotel. It's been there a long time, and it got all these posters of things that have happened. So all kinds of famous people have been there. But great hotel. Got a lot of history. But I I laughed. Uh, I talked to the lady at the hotel, and I told her, the uh, customer service rep or whatever, I said, every year I've been here, my room keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. (laughs) And I told her, I said, I nicknamed my room this year the Cozy Closet because literally I walked in. I was like, okay, this doesn't look too bad. Bathroom looks normal. I rounded the corner, and there was literally like this little cubby hole that had a full-size bed and a nightstand in it, and that was all that was going to fit in that cubby hole. It used to be a suite because they had a bay window that had had a wall like right up to the glass where they had divided the room up. (laughs) And so I had like a dresser, a ginormous TV, and a desk, and they were in really weird weird angles in the room oh, and this bed up in this little cubby hole it was so funny i mean if i'd had one other person with me that they would not have fit in yeah. this room oh, yeah. i mean it was a one person room so anyway she apologized and she said when i come next year to be sure to let her know she makes sure she get me That's in a right. nice big yeah, room i said me, put me somewhere other than the closet yeah exactly yeah. so anyway at least have the good grace to take the brooms out when i show up <laughs> yeah it was just it was just funny Yep, this is the uh, Voice for Real Estate, CWTAR, Central West Tennessee Association of Realtors, is the presenter. And uh, you also can see this on Facebook Live on the CWTAR Facebook page. Paul Schilze, the owner, operator, curator, and everything else with uh, Worthy, Worthy Road, Road Studios is our man putting it uh, on the on the um, Facebook page Thank for you, Paul. us. Paul, is your, hand, is your hand available back there a minute? There he is. Paul <laughs> Schulze, our man with a hand, back in the in the control booth back there. Also, we want to remind everybody, we, we talked about uh, Leaders uh, Mortgage Services as one of our sponsors. Angie Hooten Hughes, the agent for Allstate Insurance, is one of our sponsors also. So when you start looking for a new home, whether you're selling yours and buying a new one or this may be your first time around, insurance is an integral part of that because the <laughs> uh, the lender is going to require that that house 
have right. the proper insurance on there. But you also have other types of insurance. You've got the home, you've got your homeowners, then you got your auto and maybe some life insurance. If you check with Angie mm-hmm. at 901 373 6060, she'll be more than happy to sit down with you, talk about what you have now, and give you an idea of what Allstate can do to bundle all that. It'll save you some time, it'll save you some money, and you've got it all right there with one place and only one person that uh, you need to answer to. So call Angie Hooten Hughes at 901 373 6060, and you'll be in good hands with Allstate. That's right. Also, Our uh, Pete Dubasson at National Property Inspections. Now, property inspections is something that has become uh, much more prevalent than it was back in the day when I was doing yes. lending 40 years ago. And, uh, and it, that is normally uh, the, the purview of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the seller, correct? Uh, that is a – well, it can be. Yeah. Uh, some sellers will use a property inspector to come in early before they put their house on the market. But the buyer is the one that, that but, they're going to But the buyer is the one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The buyer is the one that, that really uses the home inspector. And uh, like you said, they weren't really that prevalent way back in the day. And uh, they actually got better when the state made a requirement that home inspectors had a license. And Absolutely. that really got rid of a lot of your mom and pop and no yeah. no yeah. training type home yeah. inspectors. So. Yep. Yeah. 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 Got, a, got a new pickup truck with a magnetic sign, and that's about all they had. There there you go. That's yeah. what they had. Yeah, you will, they, not, you will not find <laughs> that with the National Property Inspection. No, you won't. They, uh, they are very thorough and do what they do in a in a professional and proper way. 467-6250 should you need their services. Just call Pete, and he'll, uh, he'll be glad to take care of that for you. And also the legal side of it, Bird, yes. Bird Attorneys, they've been uh, in the legal business since 1985 in this county. And uh, they do residential commercial closings, title searches and insurance foreclosures, buy-sell agreements, commercial leases and contracts, and Charles Bird will personally review all of the aspects of any real estate transaction that they're involved in. That includes research and verification of the titles, covenants and restrictions for the land use, as well as zoning and deed restrictions and anything else that might cast a shadow on that title when That's it's right. all said and done. 424-7188, Bird and Bird Attorneys, one of our super sponsors here on the voice for real he estate. is charles super nice guy him yeah. and his brother joe uh i've only met joe a few times joe's a little scary but that's okay <laughs> and i told charles that when he was here last time and he laughed and same charles, thing charles said yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and charles super nice guy no, been great very people. involved in the in the county and and he does and, and i'm gl- always glad you point that out every time because uh he does sit down and review all the documents and that's really important because i've been to so many closings over the years where the attorneys have not looked at the documents yep. at all when they sit down at the table and then they start finding mistakes just all over the place which makes the closing go yes. that much longer yep. because now we got to wait till they get the paperwork changed and sometimes they find a mistake that in today's world could cause problems because sure. now there's a certain amount of time that you have to the buyers have to review documents and they have to agree to things in a i think a three-day time frame so yes well, you know, i think they used to call that the right of rescission there you go yeah you got three days to say no right did you have a change of heart That's i've true. never in my experience i've never seen that happen have you well i've never seen that happen and I'm not even sure that's even still available anymore, to be honest with you. I don't think it is because I think even with our contracts, there is no right of rescission written into our state contracts, which you don't have to use, but most all realtors use them. Right. But there is no right of rescission. Now, you have right to rescind it before it's been signed and agreed to. True. But once it's been signed and agreed to, you're pretty much locked in at that point in time. So, but... You know, but anyways, back to that. That's that's something really good that I'm glad that uh, that Charles does is read through all the documents beforehand. So for sure. Anyways, but uh, I think uh, we're about out of time, if I'm not well, mistaken. Uh, yeah, if my watch just, tells me wrong. We're just about right. Just about right. And uh, I appreciate you uh, bringing us up to date on the trip to Washington. Yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad you learned something and got to see the president in action. That was, was pretty uh, cool. I'll yeah. have to admit that was the highlight. I kind of wish I'd gone on over now, but I would I wouldn't have made it. I can just tell you, I would have had to come out, <laughs> and come back in at least five times during that. Time, yeah, right? well, there, there, there are certain <laughs> things that we have to heed the call. Yeah, we do. No matter who just, says we can't. When you yeah. get to a certain age, you know what? It just happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wait till you get up here where I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It happens all, more often and with more urgency, believe me. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Always a pleasure, man. It's good to see you. Too, you too, Jimmy. Brent, I appreciate it. Brent Ward, our host this morning. Presentation of CWTAR, the Central West Tennessee Association of Realtors. This has been the voice for real estate. We'll do it again next Monday in the 10 o'clock hour. If you're in the market for a